Hi there, welcome to The Country with me, John. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Hanel Jaeger 9, a Kiplar rifle for less than £2,000. Uh, without further ado, come in close, let's have a little look, see what you get for your money. So let's start by taking her apart. To take her apart is on a little pull latch on the forend, that pulls back, the forend pops off. Top lever pushes over, and the barrel swings out. Feeling your little tilting block there. So on the back you have a rubber pad, it's got a little hole there so you can take the stock off without taking the pad off. The actual pad to wood fit is acceptable, it's not the nicest thing in the world but it is acceptable. Uh, moving on to the stock, the stock is a grade 1 plus slash grade 2 piece of walnut. It is unexciting, uh, it's probably the best way to put it. The actual fitment of the stock in terms of its dimensions, oh, it's got massive pitch so you can still shoot it scoped and yet it still looks quite classy. You have a raised cheek piece on the side, so it's basically specifically right-handed, that left-handed options are available. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, whilst we're talking about wood grade, is upgraded wood is also available. You can get this in, a, I think, up to grade eight. Hanel is owned by Merkel, so this is essentially just a dress-down K3. But there's no need for it to be dressed down. You can invest, and for a lot less money than a K3, have a gun that will look very, very nice. Comes fitted with a little swing swivel on the bottom there, and has got a kind of strange press checkering. I think this would really benefit from being chased out by hand. I wouldn't say it's particularly laser cut, but the edge is laser cut. It's strange. Whatever it is, it's very strange checkering, but in the hand it feels nice and it feels effective. The wood to metal fit on the headwork is exceptional, uh, as you'd expect. Natural. Tilting block is crisp and nice, and it all goes together very well. Uh, for those who don't know, the tilting block locks in to the bottom of the barrel lug here, so it closes up around here, and actually will lock and form with the barrel, so you get perfect head spacing every time, so it keeps the joint independent of the action. One would presume that this little drift pin in the side allows you to remove this faceplate, so you should be able to change your calibre with relative speed. For a cheap gun, that's quite nice. However, again, probably looking at the prices of barrels and blocks, you wouldn't be far wrong with getting yourself a new gun anyway. This barrel in particular is the Open Sight Lightweight 270 barrel. It is available in all popular calibers, as I'm sure you're aware. It's also available screw cut. You can get a slightly heavier weight. You can get shorter and longer barrels. As I'm sure you can see, these fiber optic sights on this barrel are quite nice. And I think the op opportunity to have it open sight is quite smart. Uh, there is room with the way the foresight is attached to have it threaded underneath here. They come unthreaded. The foresight is sprung. It's a nice feature. It means you're not going to break it quite so readily. And this rifle is very much functionality built. It is a function built rifle. So this rifle is designed to work. And for a Kiplau, this is probably one of the least exotic but yet best engineered options out there. If you're after a no frills, yet still absolutely beautiful rifle. You can see they've put a lot of thought into making it semi-abusable, I think the word would be, uh, and yet still extremely refined. Let's just pop it together. The forehand is fairly unexciting as well, but does match the stock with its strange, nasty, semi-lacquer finish. It is a dyed, dyed finish as well. It doesn't do anything for me, but you know, I th just as a quick one, I think this would hugely benefit from being stripped in oil properly, but that's something you can do on your own accord. Essentially all you're doing is saving money by buying this slightly cheaper gun anyway. Let's pop it together. Pops together rather nicely. Clicks in there. And that goes up. The forehand goes on. Uh, there is a slight adjustable draw piece here. That's quite nice, so you can actually make the gun feel a little bit tighter if you ever feel like the joint is a little bit slack and the way it clicks on and generally the engineering across this gun by the way is absolutely superb the rail is an 11 mil dovetail rail with a little stop block in the back so you can put now well, you can put return ish to zero mounts on here which is quite nice opens and closes fantastically actually very very nice the trigger the trigger is fully adjustable and is single set a bit like the K3, you have the same cock to decock on the safety, 
and you can turn it into a three stage as well. If you don't push it all the way forward, you can then, you have to double tap it to get it all the way back. But if you just push it all the way up to begin with, you can then drop it back, just a little note. Push that up, it's now cocked. You can push this trigger forward for a single set trigger, which isn't whisper like, but can be. I think weighs in at about three quarters of a pound. And, let's just fit it tight there. To be completely honest, I think the factory trigger is probably one of the best factory triggers I've ever felt in a long time. The only gripe I would have is there's no pull through, which I would have kind of liked on a more classic feel rifle. Yes, it's not a K3. There's a lot of comparisons you can make to a K3 kit blau, but it's also not the same price point. This, this gun is well under £2,000. And that's really saying something. That's quite nice, really. And the final point, the top lever. The top lever is the only part of this gun that I really kind of dislike. For an extremely plain action, they've put this kind of almost cheap, nasty scroll work on the top lever, and I don't really get it. It doesn't seem to flow with the rest of the gun, but that's about the only thing I can criticize that you couldn't improve. Again, that mixed with the wood finish, the wood finish you can obviously update, but that, I think it might have been a design flaw, but hey, it's not my shout, I don't earn, hang on. So to sum up, I think this is an extremely exciting rifle. It is a rifle that allows somebody to access the kit black market for just under £2,000. It is a good looking rifle, there's not anything about it that I can pick holes in. Yes, it would be nice to see it screw cut from the factory for our market, but they're not going to make guns just for us, given that the UK market for kit is still quite small. The engineering quality is Merkle. It is a Merkle K3. The cocking mechanism, everything is so damn similar. I've not had the stock off to have a look, but I suspect that internally it is more or less the same. For a small investment, you could send it off, have the action engraved, you could have the stock refurbished or oiled, and you could have a gun that you could quite genuinely be happy with for the rest of your life for less than £2,000. And what other guns could you get for less than £2,000? Nothing that's going to make you feel quite that good, I don't think. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and we'll see you next time.